Hello, my name is Helena Igwebike. I'm an EFT couple therapist and supervisor based in London. Today I want to talk about an intervention that really excites me. It's called Seed and Secure Attachment. Seed and Secure Attachment is about priming and mining for those attachment longings we assume are always there, even when people have learned to turn them off because of the pain of not getting their needs met. Let's face it, how many times can you go to an empty well before you decide, actually, this is too painful, I don't, I'm not going to bother anymore. But the attachment longings are still there, even when we ignore them and disown them. Now, you might be thinking, why do we want to prime the longings if it's going to cause pain? Well, one thing leads to another. Wherever there is a longing, there's usually also a fear of not getting that longing met. They seem to go hand in hand. And... What we're doing when we are seeding secure attachment is that we are priming these longings, we're trying to pull for these longings, we're trying to draw them out because the fear blocks secure attachment because it stops us from reaching to our partner for connection, for comfort, for reassurance, for soothing. And what we do when we prime and seed these longings is that we're trying to get the longings big enough to help people, to help pull people past their fears, the longings to pull them right through their fears to reach to their partner for comfort, for soothing. And why does this intervention work? Well, because we're part of the human race and we have a mammalian brain that's wired to seek secure connection, to seek comfort and connection from our loved ones from the cradle to the grave. So as soon as you begin to touch down into these longings, People respond because they're there and the need is there. Now, how do we go about seeding secure attachment? I think that's the next question you're going to ask. I hope at least I've got you curious enough how to do it. But I'll start by saying that couple therapy reminds me a little bit about, do you know the couple, do you know the children's story called Billy Goat's Gruff? I've had young kids, so that story is fresh in my mind. But I think of couple therapy a bit that way. These three billy goats grow live on one side of the river, but on the other side, they can see that the grass is really green and luscious. The thing is, there's, they have to cross a bridge and there's a troll under the bridge. And the only way to get to the other side is to overcome their fears and actually go over the bridge. And they are so tempted by this grass that they do it. And I think that's a little bit what you do when you're seeding secure attachment. You're trying to help couples access their longings to such an extent that they're willing to risk, to move past their fears, to reach to the partner for connection, for soothing. And the way we do this is really we make this implicit attachment, fears and longings explicit. We get them up and running in the room and then we seed the third option, or we seed the secure attachment option. By that, we dis I mean we seed the moves that would actually help them get their needs met. We're doing this indirectly by heightening the fears that block connection, because fears block connection because, well, they're fear-driven responses. We're either, either going to go into overreacting or we're going to go into numbing out mode. Anything to protect our vulnerability. It's actually counterintuitive to reach past your fears, to reach for your partner. So what we're doing when we're seeding secure attachment is we're heightening these fears. We're validating the fears as well. We're even validating the moves that actually block, into, uh, block secure attachment. We're heightening the fear that leads to flight or fight responses. In, we're speaking in a very validating way while indirectly stating what they could do. In other words, the first way to seed secure attachment is we validate their negative perceptions while still implying the possibility of getting their needs met by of a secure attachment. So in a sense, what we do is we describe what they normally do when they feel vulnerable and they can't connect safely and we validate it we actually highlight the attachment intention or motive behind these uh, coping strategies and then we then plant what they could do instead. 
Now, this is an EFT, it's called emotionally focused therapy. It's not solution focused therapy. We're not trying to make suggestions, you know, from a cool cognitive distance. We're getting the emotions up and running in the room. We're holding them in their vulnerability or in their pain. And then we're seeding this option. So what would that sound like? A typical sentence starter for seeding secure attachment in this way is by saying something like, you could never. And then you describe the attachment, secure attachment move. You plant it, you insert it in the moment. So something like, you could never turn to him and say, I feel so rejected right now. I really need to know that I matter to you, that I, you still care about me. And then, as soon as you say that, obviously the fear is going to come up. And then you might just conjecture around that. You might say something like, would that be too risky? I imagine that would be too risky. So, of course, instead, what you end up doing is telling him all the different ways he doesn't meet you the way you need him to. So what have I done there? I have actually highlighted the emotion the possibility that she could share the feeling of rejection and that she could ask for what she needs to feel to 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 know that she matters so what you do is you describe what they normally do in a very validating way especially when you can also highlight the attachment intention behind it and in in this case Telling him what to do is about, I want to know that I matter. So that's one way. Another example would be, another sentence starter would be, it's so hard to imagine that in those moments when you feel like you're failing her, you're disappointing her, that you could actually turn to her and seek reassurance, that you're okay, that she still cares, that you're, she's still okay with you. Now, once again, you're sort of describing what the person can't do, by suggesting what they can do in a very validating way. It's hard to trust that you're so important to him that he would really, in those moments when you feel so lonely, that you could reach to him and he would want to come close, hold you, comfort you, and really be there for you. So, once again, you're validating the longing and you're also suggesting that there is a possibility that you're that important that he would want to come close. Now, I'm trying to think of other different ways, other centers. It's basically you're being with them right where they are. You're validating right where they are, but you're constantly highlighting that there is this other option. So it's hard to say. It's hard to share. It's almost impossible to believe that in those moments when you're so triggered, that she or he would really want to come close, hold you, comfort you, that you could ask for reassurance. It's almost like you're not entitled because in some ways it's like I'm failing you. How can I possibly ask for reassurance in these moments when I feel anxious? So what do you do? You describe the move they normally do, what they normally do. You validate their fear and then you state or plant in the moment what the other option is, right? So that's one way of seeding secure attachment. Another way is basically painting a picture of secure attachment. If, how many of us are really lucky to have had parents that modeled what a secure attachment looks like? Well, I didn't have those kind of parents. And even worse, there are people who have never had the experience of a secure attachment, right? And yet we're pulled to this profession or it's the client. They just haven't got a picture of what you're talking about. They don't even know what it looks like. They don't even know what is asked, what is needed. They have no clue. And when you're painting a picture of secure attachment, what you're really doing is showing them what the secure attachment landscape looks like. You're saying, you know, I'm hoping as we go through, you're basically trying to predict where we're going to end up, a vision of hope, of what we're working towards. You know, I might be saying something like, I'm hoping as we go through this process, it's going to get easier for you two to really open up and reach for each other. And, and you know, what's going to happen as we keep going along is that you guys are going to find it easier to check in with each other and you're going to be able to stand together to fight against the cycle, stand together against the cycle. So this is just different ways of predicting what's possible. 
and you're seeding hope. It's like you're sprinkling seeds of hope and some of them might actually germinate, grow, right? And then there's another way of seeding secure attachment, which is that you highlight the exceptions to the negative cycle. Whenever there's something, there's a moment of connection in the room or couples come in and report having a connect, secure connection of some sort, you really heighten it and you really stay with that and help them really flesh out what that feels like for them, what they really did. Sometimes couples are doing secure attachment in the room and they don't even realise they're doing it. And what we're doing is helping them notice when they are actually connecting safely. So I just really want to end with, from my own experience, a health warning about seed and secure attachment. As I said, EFT is a bottom-up approach. What we do is we go into the emotion, we go into the fear, we go into the pain, and then up into the secure attachment mood move which we plant in the moment it's not cognitive right you go into the emotion get it up and running in the room and then up into the secure attachment option that we're going to plant in the moment so it's not a cognitive process it's actually a very emotional process and it works the other thing I wanted to talk about in terms of um, health warning is if we as therapists are either not in touch with our longings or somehow we've disallowed it, you know, to cope with the maybe being in a relationship where you're not getting your needs met or just simply because you're just not in a relationship where you're having that experience, you might be cut off from it. And it's actually really hard to take someone somewhere where you, you can't easily go yourself. So this process requires that we also are brave and allow ourselves to feel our longings and to really have the courage to go there with our clients. The, the more we're able to, you know, hold our own longings, honor our own longings, the easier it is for us to risk and take up our clients to those places. So I just really want to end up, end up by summing up what we've done today. We've talked about seed and secure attachment. It's really about accessing those attachment longings that we know are there. But side and side, we're dealing with the fear, the yin and yang of fear alongside longings. And the important thing is not to get our clients trapped in their fears by seeding those longings because it's the longings that's going to make them take a risk, go out on, a, on the limb, go out on a branch and trust and experience that it can actually hold, the branch can hold. And... Then there are three different ways we do it. We do it by validating the negative views while still seeding that secure attachment move that is possible in terms of helping them get their needs met. Then we also paint a picture of the secure attachment landscape. We just really flesh it out for them so that they know what we're moving towards and so that we whet their appetite so that they too want to cross over the bridge to get to the green grass on the other side. And then finally, Notice the transformation, notice the times when seeding, when secure attachment is happening in the room. That's, you know, we heighten it, we flesh it out. And that's really it for me. Um, if you want to learn more about seeding secure attachments, creating connections, I think it's page 86, has a little section on that. And also the, create, um, the workbook, Becoming an EFT Couple Therapist, also page 74 has a little bit on it. And I hope you're interested and you're going to sort of read more about it. And I welcome you. I invite you <laughs> to take a risk. Go out there, try it, see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> and leave your comments and subscribe to my channel so that hopefully you can get to watch more videos. Thank you very much for spending the evening here with me. I'm now going to go to go to get my green grass, which is actually sleep. It's really late here in London now. Thanks. Bye.